to the barbershop. I got the uh, first time ever in barbershop show history that uh, we have three people. So we have Walker. How's it going? Going good, man. Yeah, good to have you back. Oh, man. And I got my five-minute older brother because I kicked him out of mama's womb because he was sassing me. <laughs> 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 yeah. Woodrow, a.k.a. Milton. Only time you kicked me out. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go right now? We'll go right now. <laughs> I'll narrate. <laughs> and Walker might have to, because we sound the same a lot on the, mm-hmm. I, I imagine people today would be like, uh, who's talking? Because some, well, we test, have a little, test, one, two. Test, test, one, two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There. there we go. Now well, speaking is mad. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, today I wanted to, I got a, this important day. It's my wife's birthday today, oh. it, it, and uh, Ex- I got hospital bills and other things, uh, family photography, all these little things, and so it's like, I can't just go out and just, you know, give her a great birthday gift. I want to keep it under 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think about getting wives' birthday gifts under $50? So, do you know your wife's love language? You know, I should. <laughs> 15 years of marriage. <laughs> well, is it like, is it quality time think... or is it like, is it, is it gifts? You know, because some women, like that's their love language. Some are acts of service. Yeah. What kind of? Well, she likes for me to take care of myself, look good, and she feels appreciated. Like if I work out, you know, she's like, mm-hmm. oh, finally this fat butt's working out. <laughs> So, so like get, get some weights out and go work out in front yeah. of her. So this yeah. is your birthday See, baby. present, baby. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, maybe... Uh, maybe try to work out in a Speedo? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that should do it, yeah. Because you get both. Yeah, a little romantic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm reading you. Yeah, I think she'll like that. Do a little yeah. yoga in front of her. Yoga. <laughs> Backwards dragon. <laughs> Yeah. Beer, belly. <laughs> Beer belly. I can tell you do yoga. Huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. I like to do yoga. My, I was uh, mowing yesterday, and uh, you know, you, on those zero turns, you have to go underneath limbs. You know, it's, I call it lawnmower mo- yoga. Lawnmower <laughs> yoga. Lean back. You gotta like <laughs> not to poke your eye out, but you do all kinds of weird moments. <laughs> lawnmower yoga. That's the yoga I do. Yeah, a little back uh-huh. stretching. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Lawnmower torquing. Can, can you touch your toes, Matt? No, uh, really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stay there. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good point. What is her uh, love language? And um, it seems like years ago we talked about this, like we went to church and went through the whole, uh, they had a little, you know, marriage study thing. Mm-hmm. How about doing the dishes? Yeah, I do those all the time. I can do those, but... That's the key, though, is I don't do those all the time. So when I do do that, that's love language for me. Yeah. I'm liking the way you're going because so far we haven't talked about spending any money. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Walker here, he likes to play music and everything. Last episode, you played a song. You probably just whip out a song for your wife. Dude, it does work, man. Yeah. She balls her eyes out every time i wrote a song called i still do and man, you every got, day you're the golden goose man you just get to sing all those songs get you can get out of trouble so freaking easy dude it does work yeah. it really does i would abuse that if it was me <laughs> you know i'd be like yeah i want to go hang out with my friends and you know you're not at that moment there's a lot of family stuff you probably should be doing i'd go hang out with my friends and drop the ball and then she'd be like what'd you do and i just hit the strum i'd go <laughs> it doesn't sorry. really matter, it baby. Is, yeah. <laughs> probably really well. So I think work. I did abuse one of them oh, uh, yeah? when, early on in the marriage, you know, because yeah. I had one that always worked. I think I used it a couple too many times. And now I, saw, I saw her kind of like, you know, getting dis- desensitized to it. So I was like, I held off for about a year playing it. And then it, boom. Boom. Pick started it working up. again. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Lost its potency. It did. Yeah. It did. Mm-hmm. Got That's what you just got to write some more. Residual resistance. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's a good idea. I'd make a song like, I'm sorry I left the toilet seat up. (laughs) Yeah. Be neat, wipe the seat. Be neat. (laughs) That'd be a good song. Yeah. 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 Can you get me a glass of tea? I don't think my love songs work real well. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. I put the dishes in the sink, honey. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They're so good. They're They're so so good. (laughs) Your songs wouldn't really. No. No. If it was about that type of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mowed. Yeah. <laughs> you actually act like that's something. It's a riding mower. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love mowing. 
<laughs> I know because especially now, like I got these uh, mowing uh, earmuffs or mm-hmm. uh, headphones that are full riding mowers, so they block out all the mowing noise. I bought them yeah, at Home that, Depot in the mowing section, and you can hook your phone up. You can listen to music, podcast. It's pretty anything. cool. Like there's a certain so, frequency that that mowers are at, and they, it, mm-hmm. it tunes those out, and you can hear someone kind of yell at you. It's kind of weird how all it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you, I was married to you, you could buy me those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Sarah would like some of birth. those. Hey, do they make those headphones <laughs> with like uh, a frequency for kids? So you um, put those on, and you just can't hear your kids screaming, but you can still, you know, yeah. hear everything else. Uh, God naturally gave me that super. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's so it's unfortunate. You, uh, when Sarah goes, are you listening to me? And you, I don't want to say, yeah, so bad. I know, right? <laughs> you're just, you're just like, you just, she can tell. And sometimes this. I say, yeah, but it's, I'm looking at her at a glance, like you know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We both know the we, truth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's easy for husbands and daddies to zone mm-hmm. out sometimes. My wife likes for me to make her things. The problem, yeah. and my problem is, is I get about eighty percent there, and I just. Don't finish. I don't finish that. You're an 80 percenter. I'm an 80 percenter, man. Mm-hmm. I need to finish my projects. Yeah. You know, I think, wow, this is looking really good. And then, well, you just do the 80 percent and then pay somebody to do the 20. <laughs> yeah. This is. I think she's still work like out. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what about you, Walker? Are you an 80 percenter? Or you dude, a, I'm the strong starter. You're a strong. I can star. start a project like nothing else. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm a poor finisher. Yeah. It's uh, something I inherited from my dad, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm 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 good all the way. I just don't want to be bothered with anything else. Oh, really? Like, I can't have multiple projects. Like, give me one project, and then I'll finish it. Mm-hmm. So that's the best way for me to finish a project is have, like, four of them, and I can kind of rotate on me now. Mm-hmm. I like I get, I'll get kind of, kind of tired of one. I'll mm-hmm. switch to the next one, kind of motivated about that one, and then I'll easily finish them that way. But. Yeah. Yeah, Matt builds cabinets all the time, and uh, he can knock out cabinets pretty quick. I did my kitchen remodel, built all the cabinets in two years. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, everybody, like me. I remember even at Christmas time, we were like, "Do you need some money so you can get shares in that kitchen?" Yeah. Everybody was like, "I'd look at him like, no, man, I'm gonna finish it. Get off my back." <laughs> my dad, how did you? Everybody, how did you? Uh, get your wife a kitchen, man. Dude, it took me like over four years to build my house, and it, yeah. But you know, a I know house is a big project. Eh, it shouldn't have taken four years. No, it's not. But <laughs> it takes professional builders six months to a year. So you went four times as slow. It was a little. I think it was a little over a year, four years. So it was like probably four and a half, something like that. So, but and, yeah, it was. And you did a lot of it yourself. Uh, like with, almost all of it. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. a professional builder does it in six months to a year with lots of paid labor and man hours. No. Yeah, See, I feel like you, I, you, 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 Hey, I, I like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, hey. This is here. Here, this is hey, how I'm telling hey, this hey, to Yeah, hey, honey, start yeah. listening to the podcast about nine minutes. It's okay. I'll talk <laughs> yeah. For how long I took. Yeah. <laughs> no, she says that. Yeah. I just feel like it took too long. Yeah, you know, when you're living in, it's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. So you lived in something. For a little time. bit, yeah. yeah. Last year and a half mm-hmm. of it. You lived in it. Yeah. But, you know, building something for your wife, getting her something, that's something you can always do that's on the cheap. Because I imagine lots of guys are in me. You know, I mean, our early years of marriage, uh, heck, $20 gifts sometimes is all we could afford, me and Sarah, mm-hmm. you know, some of our early years. And so uh, a lot of married men are in this boat where it's their wives and mm-hmm. they want to give them something great. Uh, we all who love our wives, like I love my wife, I'd love to give her a million dollar gift, but we can't just do that. Yeah. And so, uh, I yeah. take mine to Waterburger and say, "It's your birthday. Let's water size it." <laughs> <laughs> As an expression of my love, get whatever you want. Water size it. What? What? And the jalapenos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, like, but we're splitting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do remember some McDonald's. Uh, Times when it was just like that. I don't know. It was special times when we yeah. had no money. It was like, let's go to McDonald's, and that was. Our, it's, I look at our those splurge. Yeah, I look at those poor times and think, man, that was a, those a good fun, times. good times. I don't want to go back, but those are good times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what about you know, say get a babysitter, get all the kids taken care of, you and her go out. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, 
That'd be good. I, I, she's cute and pregnant. I'm gonna. Re- we'll edit out that <laughs> other that one. Yeah, boom, <laughs> yeah. boom, God. Yeah. And uh, so you know, she we can't go very far, and lots of activities probably like you know, uh, physical activity like kayaking or mm-hmm. mountain biking. She's all pretty active, typically. Yeah, she, she, yeah. She's yeah. pretty active. Yeah, she's pretty active. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we'll probably do something like that. But then she wants this baby out, so she might want to go kayaking or something. We have a cool place to go kayaking. Hey, if you go kayaking, you can do a natural like water birth right there. I mean, you're surrounded yeah. by the <laughs> water birth. <laughs> Swamp thing is coming. <laughs> all the perch so. eat all the afterbirth. <laughs> 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 it's organic. <laughs> yeah, might go kayaking and all that, but some no, other ideas. But like, what about so could we cook some dinner, get together, and then yeah. just like uh, there's any in the kind of like beautiful uh, ponds. What's her favorite food or something? Hang out I super about cheap buying, that way. Like, two really nice steaks because you know we got little mm-hmm. boys and so like, we can just you oh, know yeah. give them and just grilling them out. And, mm-hmm. So. Mm. Yeah. But so, the most important thing is you got to do something. I got to do something. Don't can't forget I can't, it. Can't forget it. Uh, I did get up early this morning, went to the donut shop, got everybody a donut. And oh, that's nice. We put candles on it and sang happy birthday to That's her. cool. Started off right. Though. Yeah, I started off. Good. So she already knows I know. Mm-hmm. Do you send flowers to her at work? Yeah, I used to do that, but now I'm kind of like, oh, I'll just go to work and bring her flowers. That's actually even more better. Oh, mm-hmm. It is better. And it's cheaper, a lot cheaper. You can go to H E B or Walmart yeah. or whatever and Sh- Sharon hates flowers. Yeah. I'm blessed that way. Yeah. She thinks it's just like you know, she'd rather have a wallet or a pocket knife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every man's dream. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like when your wife passes away, you're gonna get a lot of cool stuff. I am. <laughs> I can buy her gun. gun. Yeah, it's a, and I you think know. about it, you know. It's like, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, what I would get I mean, for her birthday. What am I gonna do with like, you know, mm-hmm. my wife's, you know, stuff? Yeah, I don't know. It's not nothing I won't. Well, you're kind of more of the Fenneman twin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice centerpiece, Matt. <laughs> it is a nice centerpiece. You do. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, speaking of this, we, you know, by the way we treat our wives in birthdays and things, we're imitating that with educating our boys, you know, mm-hmm. about how they should treat their wives. We're we're being an example, so uh, and we should be thoughtful and and show them how to be good and married yeah. men. And uh, because we want them to be that way, and uh, so educating our kids is kind of the things, and there's all these different ways of educating our kids today, and we do that through. And it it was opening my mind, I was my sister was over for this weekend, we got into about all the different ways of education. Now, she is a staunch public school person, and uh, to the point where it drives me nuts because I believe in all free choice, like vouchers public school systems that are are acceptable to me mm-hmm. i don't think they're bad right uh but uh homeschooling and all mm-hmm. these different ways but there's all these different ways now with technology too you could public school or homeschool you yeah. can do virtual classes online it's funny uh public school teachers say that's not acceptable but then the college is like come to you know such and such yeah. university online we have online classes so yeah it's funny the higher education is acceptable but not for lower education mm-hmm. but anyway what well, do y'all i think that's partly because higher education can get paid either way mm-hmm. uh you know your lower grades public schools they only get paid if you show up yeah so yeah right or if for you the most go, part, anyways. Mm-hmm. that's the way texas run, works is right. so if you go to a attendance. voucher program say like you have a small school and mm-hmm. 20 kids leave and that voucher program, uh, if those 20 kids leave with their money. Like a little six-man school. Yeah, like little, a little six-man school. Little towns less than a sudden, thousand people. Those six kids represent a teacher's pay. Mm-hmm. And they got to find a way to pay for that teacher that they need, desperately need. Yeah, and I'd be fine with some of these small schools. Nobody mm-hmm. likes saying this, but, mm-hmm. I mean, we got school every five miles. Do we mm-hmm. need a school every five miles? <laughs> Don't say that too loud. <laughs> I, you know, I, like it, it would it would open up a market that the good schools would I think keep we're their all kids in this table here. I, my son goes to public school. Yours goes to private. And yeah. yours, what does yours do? I have two homeschooled, one public schooled. Mm-hmm. So, so we're, we're all three at different 
Yeah. Where all three have different yeah. uh, experiences. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I've seen successes in all. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen failures. In all. In all. I think when it, when it comes to education, it, I think parents should be the number one choice about and have the freedom to do so. Now, yeah. If you have a kid that's uh, got a handicap or uh, maybe mm-hmm. severely autistic, mm-hmm. maybe he's just a wild boy that he's not going to learn in a classroom setting. I heard this one idea that as schools used to have a lot of male teachers. There's only male teachers now in schools, it seems like, to be as a coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but back in the day, there was elementary, you know, uh, kindergarten through sixth grade, there was men school teachers. Yeah. And uh, as women became mo- mainly the teachers, they started teaching in more of a feminine way where uh, little boys would get restless in class. But when mm-hmm. if you had a history male teacher, he'd come in acting like a, yeah. a Roman soldier wanting to cut off your head. Yeah. Right. And he would keep your attention yeah. about history. Maybe throw the football at you at yeah. the classroom. And it's kind of like Robin Williams in Dead Poet Society. You mm-hmm. know, he was this cool English teacher that was a guy that mm-hmm. taught English. Mm-hmm. Well, when you have a female aspect of just teaching your whole, say you have female teachers all the way through high school, uh, you've kind of learned through a female mindset. Not that that's bad; that can be good. But there's, I think men would probably bring certain topics in a different manner. Yeah, yeah, and we wonder why you know girls thrive so much better, you know, in those early years of school. It's, I think that's partly because it because. You, know, you have women teaching women. They go, they're going to teach a little bit differently than men are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like you said that's a great thing. It's just we have to, you know, I think recognize that. And and, and what do little girls want to do? They want to sit and play tea and have a house. And what do little boys want to do? My little boys want to be a Power Ranger, and you're going to be a bad guy, and he's going to keep hitting you with this plastic sword <laughs> until yeah. you say stop it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So anyway, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that though, because Dad was talking to me the other day about how his favorite teacher was his history teacher and he would come in there Mm -hmm. and he would act out the whole thing you know and yeah and bring it to life and uh then we all learn differently we all learn and and that's what i think about choice it's like you know bring the choice to uh the family so the this this one family has a wild boy that needs to be maybe in a different type of setting whether it be homeschooled private school or uh, there's one school that does kind of like a hybrid Mm-hmm. Where you homeschool some topics and then you go to private school for some other topics. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> the thing that concerns me about public school, my sit, my son goes to public school, is the testing. So, uh, flashback when me and Matt were young, mm-hmm. when I was uh, in eighth grade, I didn't pass the TOS test, which is the state standard test back then. Mm-hmm. And in our freshman year, I had to go take like a remedial reading class. Well, in that remedial reading class, I had four of my buddies with me. I'm not going to say their names, but these guys are all really successful now. One's a special forces. One made some kind of microchip for the dairy industry to, and has made lots of money. Another one went to uh, like a, a, a TSTC, which he, he fixes toilets. And then I became a barber in my barbershop's pretty, pretty, pretty successful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that snapshot in our life, the end of our eighth grade year or freshman year, we were the future losers by testing. <laughs> Does right. that make sense? Right. Yeah. But uh, all of us boys in that class mm-hmm. were not guys that just really enjoyed to read, but we were very successful with our hands. Yeah. You know. And that's one thing boys are tactical learners. We're tactical learners. You know, they want to pick up, hold. That's, they, want, they want to take apart the lawnmower. Mm-hmm. And so what I see about public schools is that let's throw this test down here. And well, it's, it's not a good rule measuring stick mm-hmm. for the. It's not fair for the school, the teachers, or the kids by measuring them this way to see how successful they are going to be. Yeah. Also, it's uh, you know, I look, you know, you went pretty far. You went st- went state and in, in machine shop. Yeah. You know, went in small engine repair. You know, these things are. We were stellar in those things. Yeah, we came, came to our hands or fixing things. But I took a. Mm-hmm. I remember this. This is funny about. Uh, my sister said, "Well." She was afraid that if school vouchers were allowed, that all these little private schools would pop up and they would be called diploma mills. That's what she called them. People that would just take the government's money and then hand Mm -hmm. the parent over a diploma. And I said, well, Jennifer, 
I took AP English, college English, and I passed it. Mm-hmm. I failed the tossed English test, the standardized test. You know, I could pass the class, but I'd fail the test. And I took remedial English mm-hmm. in uh, college three times, failed all three times. Mm-hmm. So it's funny. It's like right. just because you pass something, uh, you know, we all have a journey of learning. And the only the best person who's going to know the journey of learning is the parent, I think, an involved a parent that's that's uh, has the time to really stop and think about it. And if you don't have if you're that single mom and you got like five kids and that. You're not sitting here. You don't have really the time. No. That's what public school's for. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and try to make the time. I mean, people talk about public school. That's the way to do it. You know, homeschooling's weird or private. You know, but in the grand scheme of things, public school is a new. It's it's new on the market. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. If you look at the uh, the history. Yeah. Throughout. You know. And I'm not down again. I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all. But I do think it comes down. To your house, your home is going to know best. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm a parent, and I'm not very good at teaching my kid. I'm not sending them to private school. I'm not sending them to public school, you know. Mm-hmm. Or I have a kid that's just, he's not picking it up, you know. I want to send him. We're going to try different stuff. Yeah. And that's one thing I love about Texas is that you do have options. The, uh, amazing amount of options on what you want to yeah. do. Well, it's, and then on that, it's like you sometimes think, well, you want to put your kids where they're going to learn the manners and the behavior that you want for society. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, sometimes you're in a, a ghetto school and you would love to be able to, and these kids are hanging out with gangbangers or whatever, or maybe mm-hmm. the, just some crazy rednecks out in the country town and they're blowing up mailboxes every weekend or something. Mm-hmm. You think, and I need to get my kid away, get some positive influences. And by putting them in a different school, whether homeschool, private school, or, or a hybrid, or yeah. moving them to across mm-hmm. district, district lines, moving them from to the school, the other public school five miles down the road, you're able to bring some type of change. What I've noticed about smaller schools, my son goes to a small school. Whole school is probably 250 kids from mm-hmm. kindergarten to 12th grade. Wow. So, <clears throat> so there's big schools. Well, when I, the big schools, there's we're just going to say they're kind of clickish. You know, there's this group over here, there's this group over here. You know, you might have a couple of teachers per grade. My son, you go to his hallway, in his hallway you see pre-K through fifth grade. You know, next year I, I see that teacher my son's going to have because there's only one of them, you know. And then you see that uh, principal carrying a, or the superintendent carrying a plunger to plunge that toilet. You know, in a big school, you don't see no superintendent carrying no plunger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Go plunge a toilet. Yeah. You know? And so what happens is it makes it almost like a – everybody learns to team up as a team. Yeah. And accomplish things. And then – Especially on, like, small te- small schools that were uh, – buddy, mm-hmm. uh, you tell your friend, if you don't play basketball, we don't have a team. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of forces your kids to learn to get along with other kids. Yeah. You know, at a big school, my, my son could go and – Find friends that are more like him and be and get along and not be stretched quite and, so and much. Also, but at, at a small school, there's hard to get along with Johnny. You know, there's only twelve boys in his class. Well, well you're gonna learn to get along with Johnny and be his friend because that's your only option. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, I, I noticed smaller schools seem to be more. Yeah, helps your kids to associate better. I think so sometimes. Yeah, you know, you know, most times. <laughs> But the behavior, you know, like, where did we get from, like, the school system where we're at now where, like, we have, like, such disrespect? I remember, like, with, like, a good example of how our culture is changing is Colin Kaepernick kneeling all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, we used to be, like, get up in the public school. Uh, we'd have a prayer over the intercom sometimes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. put our hand over our heart and say the pledge Yeah, to the point where we have kneeling at football games. And it's just like, where did we go from there to there? How did we get there? Well, I would, I would say a lot of things would be, you know, leaving God out of a lot of it. You know, of course, society doesn't want to hear that. But yeah, you know, you even if you don't believe in the Ten Commandments, you can say that you know they're good. <laughs> you know, there's some pretty yeah. good rules for society to live by. <laughs> you know, you. If you want to kick them out, kick them out. But you know, if you kick those things, that kind of stuff out, you you kick it also kick out some kind of value system. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's just like, uh, you know, I see 
my boy likes to wear his hat backwards. I hate that. I can't stand that. I'm with you. <laughs> and so I don't let him do it. But then other good dads. Yeah, good dads. Say, ah, oh, man, Football I, coach I don't want to. I don't want to fight that battle. I'm sitting there thinking, I want to fight that battle. <laughs> I know. Even so simple, it's just a hat. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. like, uh, take your hat. You yeah. know, wear it properly. Uh, anything that resembles the drug uh, lifestyle, mm-hmm. sagging pants, uh, any shirts that resemble gang type shirts, I kind of want to just like, you're out, man. Just you know. Mm-hmm. So you know, I think. When it comes to educating our kids, it's, it goes more than just uh, what school do they go to. Yeah, you know, when we were kids, we played sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, our coaches made us wear slacks, ties, button-up shirts. It was like we was going up for church on away games. Yeah, on away games, you had to wear. Mm-hmm. There was none of that this. was in junior high. That was in junior high, all the way through high school. Yeah. I played basketball through high school, so on a basketball away game, it was wear a tie, <laughs> wear all that. So yeah. Of course, you know, <laughs> Tibbs, not, you know, there's good dads, like I said, that wear hats backwards. Uh, our, re, our, our sound engineer wears his hat backwards. Yeah. So that's, that's how you knew he's a good yeah. sound engineer. That's how you knew he was good. Yeah, yeah, he knows the beat, knows the toe, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I would yeah. you know, like, I know some phenomenal dads that let their kids wear their hat backwards. And my br- big brother wore his hat backwards, you know, and it doesn't mean you're a bad guy. We love you, Tim. Yeah. Uh, but I do think. It, you know, if you let them do that and you let them wear I, clothes, I think it does change. I think it does change how you act. I think if you wear slacks, mm-hmm. nice shoes, and a nice polo shirt, it's going to change how you act. If you're going to be wearing, mm-hmm. yeah, overalls, ball overalls. chains, and all yeah. that. Of course, if, <laughs> if we had a video here, you'd see that my brother wears overalls and a golfing cap every day. I, those round rim glasses. Do those have a style? What do, they, what do you call those? I call them the Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, yeah, that's like, it. Uh, it's a good description. Look, I yeah. just, you know, you're yeah. a hybrid between uh, Lenny off Mice and Men, Teddy Roosevelt, <laughs> and Bagger Vance golf. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like what? What, what is crazy? It? You're definitely mm-hmm. like not of this era. Mm-hmm. And the, I, and I, the know, beard, I feel the, like I shouldn't be the, the, the Amish beard. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. For my wife's birthday, I'm gonna get her a bonnet and a dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his wife never wears dresses. So. Uh-huh. She'd yeah, kill, I was gonna she'd say, kill me. <laughs> she'd strangle she, she, you. She wouldn't have anyone to put her pocket knife. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think in respecting your uh, your public servants, whether it's first responders, your military, yeah, you know, I think that's huge. You, you need to teach your kids to to do that. Yeah, like um, I, it's it's devastating when any life is taken. But I truly like the slogan, all lives matter, because they truly all do. They all do. And when we start, I don't care if you say Asian, black, whatever, Mm -hmm. police lives only matter. I mean, once we start saying, start picking one, it's just like, "Eh, we all kind of matter. And and then you see other, other things like that. So by the way, we, we educate our kids about how we respond to these news issues. Like, all lives matters, black lives, you know, kneeling at the flag. We're bringing an educational value to our children at that point. Well, kneeling at the flag, was that over black lives matter? Or yeah. Something? Which Let's is, see. yeah, so, I well, don't know. It seems to all be melded together. Right. So, uh, so far this year, we have six military guys have died in Afghanistan. I'm sure a bunch of others have mm-hmm. injured themselves or and seen things, but we've had six, uh, American deaths in Afghanistan. We've had over 130 deaths this year of law enforcement. You know, so to think you can go to Afghanistan and and fight and die for our country, and God bless them, and yeah. we're thankful for them. But for a man to kneel on a flag, and there's a higher death rate in law enforcement in America mm-hmm. than the man. It, it, it kind of it's kind of weird to think that you know to see that statistic. You know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you're safer in Afghanistan than patrolling the streets of your hometown. Yeah, or just, in yeah. some ways. In yeah. some ways, obviously, if we just parachute you into Afghanistan, <laughs> yeah. obviously, there's, yeah. there's, <laughs> there's, uh, right. But uh, when I when I heard about the, uh, you know, there's going to be some bad eggs in every group. Yeah, know? but for the most part, I think people, law enforcement, and in, in the military, that's what they're they're doing the best they can in the circumstances, and just. Yeah. 
Well, we're never going to put Jesus Christ as a police officer. We'd yeah. hate it if we had him. <laughs> he would straighten us up pretty quick. And, uh, going in there, flip the tables around, you know, get, get the whip out. Yeah, he'd flip the tables over and get us out. But the thing is, we're going to put imperfect people that are good people mm-hmm. in, in law enforcement. And when they do wrong, uh, the media is going to let that know. And, and especially when it's obviously wrong, like a racist cop shooting yeah. a, you know, a man of color mm-hmm. or whatever, uh, profiling in a bad way. And, uh, you know, we, but we have society bounds for that already. You know, that's what the news and media is already for. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we just got to have grace uh, on all that. Like you said, we're going to have bad eggs. But for the most part, cops are doing a great job. And we should be very proud. We're in the most profitable, free country that the world ever has known. Yeah. Free country, like where a person can speak out against yeah. uh, the president. Several people spoke out against uh, Putin, and he killed him. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, uh, several people spoke out against several other. Yeah, the can, guy in uh, Venezuela has killed several of his uh, political opponents. Yeah, can you imagine if a, uh, a comedian in, in Russia uh, had like a, a mock head chopped off of Putin and held it up? You know what happened? Mm-hmm. You know, like how? Who, who was it here that did that? What I, was name? I forget about the comedian, but yeah, I, but yeah, yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's not the same. And, yeah. and so with that freedom, you know, you can protest stuff. And so I'm, if Kaepernick was a decent human being, I would be okay with him. I think I'd be more okay with him kneeling at the flag. I don't like it. I don't support it in any way. But I'd be more okay with it. But at the same time, whenever you're kneeling that, and then you're wearing socks that you know the the had the, the you know the, the, the pigs on them, you know, oh, yeah. saying hey, I saw that. You know, supporting let's mm-hmm. kill the pigs, aka mm-hmm. cops. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, that's not cool at all. And so mm-hmm. at that point, I want the whole thing gone. Yeah, you know, there's a lack of gratitude or thankfulness for what we have. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that will just morph into that. Yeah, junk. Exactly. Yeah, there were several. I remember the naivety of uh, me as a youth, or if that's even the way when I was a young kid, and then I became older and I had children, and it opened up my eyes. Oh yeah, of these things, and and it humbled me about the stupid things I'd say to my dad when I was young. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, I just ask for, I pray that America will be humbled. Yeah. We'll come. We will be eventually. Yeah. No matter what. <laughs> yeah. Know. Yeah. <laughs> but with that, you know, there's all fun ways to educate your kids. Lots of think of your wife's love language with the uh, birthday gift topic. And uh, you know, God bless America. God bless America. <laughs> God bless guns. <laughs> this is the barbershop. Right.